Hey guys and girls, welcome to Nightwise.com, KW609, where we are going to war drive with Wiggle. On the edge of real and cyberspace, there's one place you can go, and you found it. Welcome to Nightwise.com, the one and only podcast with hacks, tips, and tweaks for cross-platform geeks. Whether you're a Windows, Linux, Mac, iOS, Android, Windows Phone, or Sun Solaris user, we have the tricks you need to tune tech into your way of life and let that technology work for you. My name's Nightwise, and for the coming, uh, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes or so, I'm going to be your host on this episode of the Nightwise.com podcast, KW609, War Driving with Wiggle. Hey guys and girls, how are you today? Welcome to Nightwives.com and welcome to very, very sunny and warm Belgium. It's 32 degrees outside, I have popped open some windows so you might hear some ambient noises from the outside, but it is really warm here at the studio today, so actually I shouldn't be inside at all. With this weather, it's way too good to, uh, you know, the weather's way too hot and too beautiful actually to sit inside. You should go outside and have fun. And you know, you know what happens when they talk to geeks and they say, hey geek, the weather is beautiful outside. Go, go play outside. Well, we take our Android phone and we go play outside. <laughs> That's what we're going to do today. I'm going to show you a very cool tool called Wiggle.net. It's a combination of an app and a web service, point at the right screen here nightwise, that helps you kind of map a lot of SSIDs and access points all over the world to make them work for you in several ways. Very interesting and geeky stuff and we've got it coming up. After that we have some great community feedback from one of our listeners, Thor, who is going to tell us how to connect to the Nightwise.com Mumble server, that's our chat server where you cross-platform geeks can actually do voice chats together using an Android phone. So, we've got a lot to get through. Let's start war driving with Wibble. This is my phone. It's a really cool phone. It's a Galaxy S2 and I really like it. But the cool thing about it is that it's, it's actually a little bit of a computer with a couple of antennas. It has a Wi-Fi antenna a GPS antenna, a Bluetooth antenna, which is on, shouldn't be on, it's eating my battery. But if you think of it, my Wi-Fi antenna is made to connect to wireless networks. It's constantly looking for wireless networks to connect to and it's showing me their names. My GPS antenna, on the other hand, is constantly looking where I am on the planet and trying to locate my position. In all, that's not very exciting, but what if we were to combine those uh, data streams from those two antennas and put them in an application called the Wiggle Wi-Fi War Driving app, which is a cool name. What you get is an application that is constantly monitoring where you are and it is also looking which access points are around. It's uh, taking a look at the um, name of the access point the position of the access point and the MAC address of the access point. Now, if you were to drive around, you would get this. A map of all of the access points in the area on your route. I'm going to try to zoom in here a little bit. I'm driving through town and as you can see there are a lot of them out there. And uh, Wiggle is uh, look, looking at their names, it's looking at where I am at the moment, Pretty cool stuff if you think of it. You can actually activate this on your smartphone and just drive around and watch Wiggle um, just collect massive amounts of information about access points that are up there. And with that data you can do some interesting things. You can look for a certain access point you have uh, detected along the route if you enter the address. 
You can look where you found a certain access point by entering its SSID. And you can export that data, the coordinates and the SSID, to a database. And you can just keep it and overlay it to Google Maps with uh, the um, export to KML. So you can make your own little database of access points along your route to work, for example. But there is another button here, and that button says upload to wiggle.net. So what happens if you and everybody who uses the app uploads all of that information to the internet? Now, what if all that information that you collected using the app on your phone, those GPS coordinates and those SSIDs and those MAC addresses, would get uploaded to a giant database on the internet? Well, enter Wiggle. Uh, this is where your data goes when you press the little button Upload, and you'll go to an online database of 1 billion 932 million 900, uh, sorry, 692 four thousand four hundred and eleven unique observations of SSIDs or access points or wireless um, access points or cellular towers all over the planet. You have to make an account in order to use the full functionality of the site and I just uh, did that and logged in but uh, Wiggle offers you some really cool ways to uh, you know play with that information. First of all you can of course find a wireless network by searching or browsing the interactive app. If you have made your own observations using, for example, something else uh, like, I don't know, Kismet or something, you can upload that stumble file to Wiggle or actually enter uh, an observation by hand. Or you can put some remarks on an existing network. We're going to start by just plain searching the Wiggle database. And you can do quite a lot of things. You can look for a um, a certain address and a zip code if you're in the US or you can bracket off a certain part of the world by using latitude and longitude coordinates you can take a look at when uh, you can search via a last update so you can really query around and of course you can just enter your MAC address the cool thing is you can also uh, sorry you can enter the SSID but the cool thing is you can also enter a MAC address now why would this be important let's say you have uh, your stalker and your ex-girlfriend left you and she took the wireless router with her well if uh, she changed the SSID it's gonna be hard to find but if you still know the MAC address even though they have changed the SSID you can possibly still find that router again in the um, Wiggle database so pretty cool things but to keep it simple, ju let's just look for a uh, SSID here. I'm going to call, uh, I'm going to type in the random name of an SSID, let's say TARDIS. And it will give you an entire list of all the SSIDs with the name TARDIS that have been word driven or stumbled. So you can see the uh, MAC address, the SSID name, the type, and when it was first detected, when it was uh, recently detected, and some more information. Now, the great thing is you can just click the map and then you'll see where that access point is. Now, here we have uh, Google Maps with the uh, KML overlay of Wiggle.net. And you can see there are actually two TARDIS access points in this very area, which is, you know, quite a coincidence. Now, if we zoom out, we're going to see where we are. Let's see, that's Brisbane River. So that's Brisbane. We're in Australia. We can go back and just randomly select another one, see where that will uh, end us up. Where are we? Takes Wiggle a little bit here on uh, Borsier Drive. And let's zoom out where that is. That is in hmm, Queensway, Ottawa River. I think we're in the US, Ottawa. I'm not very good at geography. Let me see, Kingston, New York. Yep, there we go. I think we're in Canada. So cool. And you can type in all kinds of crazy names, like, um, let's say, where are all the FBI vans? Plenty of those. 
there you go. There's even an FBI fan guest. Uh, people calling their uh, networks FBI van. So if any of you are near South Street Lakewood Boulevard, and let's see where we are here. In Lakewood, we're going to zoom in, wait for the overlay of um, of Wiggle to kick in and we should be able to find where the FBI van went here on Bonfair Avenue in um, Lakewood you will find an SSID named FBI van 1 now that's all nice and cool and and uh, you can spend uh, hours doing crazy things like for example um, entering this SSID And there are a, a, a couple of funny ones uh, here. Uh, you can find them just about anywhere on the planet. <laughs> there's this one and there's this one. Let's see if this one uh, is anywhere near uh, somewhere who, who uh, somebody who listens to the nightwise.com um, website or website podcast. Uh, if you're at Merman Drive, Campus Common South, and you zoom out and you are uh, in Pullman and that would be in Washington you might want to tone it down because uh, somewhere around there there is an access point with that funny name cool stuff uh, hours and hours you can spend on here you can look by SSID whatever you want to but how can Wiggle really work for you? Well, uh, I've got a practical example. Let's say your parents say, we're going on a holiday and we're going camping. Okay, and you're going camping in the worst camping site in the world. Here, Camping Dallas at the Flemish coast site in Blankenberg. This is the ass end of nowhere and for some geeks, who will be banished to this area, it will be very hard to survive because there is no Wi-Fi around here. What to do? Well, there's a good thing you've got Wiggle. All you need to do is browse the interactive map and because it's tied in to Google Maps it will actually show you the access points in the area. So we're gonna start searching here That's the cool thing about um, Google Maps. It will take you right to your destination. And there you see all of these little red dots. And all of those are actually access points that have been detected by uh, people with a Wiggle app or which uh, with, a, with an app that uploaded it to Wiggle. So pretty soon you will see all around uh, the um, Blankenberg area all of these SSIDs. Now Wiggle doesn't allow you to search for open SSIDs. It cannot make that distinction and that's actually a little sad but hey you know what you can just look for the SSID of a Belgian hotspot and that uh, is a system that we uh, that one of our ISPs uses here in Belgium every customer has a wireless router provided to him by the ISP and it has two SSIDs on a separate VLAN. One SSID is for the customer itself, it is, it's his private LAN. The second SSID is accessible to any Telenet customer who enters his login and his password and they will be taken directly to the internet. So it's kind of a distributed home spot and there are uh, quite a few around here as you can see. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom in on one. I found this one pretty pretty cool. There are three of them here and if I show you where that is that is actually on our pier so I think inside this building that's a restaurant and cafe there are three routers or perhaps one that's been uh, picked up three times although um, Wiggle will make a distinction between different MAC addresses so these are three different observations of three different routers and you can just see where all of these hotspots are in the city so that's actually pretty cool now 
let's say that you're not a Telenet customer and you say like, yeah, you know what, I might just, you know, go looking somewhere for uh, one of those hotspots that's very default, like for example, the Linksys, you know, those people that buy a Linksys router and don't secure it anymore. And there are quite a few of Linksys routers all out, all throughout the city, but there is one thing that you should know. You should distinguish your oper your observations, because this is all of the routers that have picked up, been picked up, called Linksys from 2001, right up to the end of the year. Now, that's not what we want. We want to take a look at the observations of only, let's say, the last year. And we're going to update that. And then you see a lot of those Linksys routers are gone, but there are still a few left. So if you go somewhere over here, where was it? Uh, there you go. Uh, near the promenade, you will find that there is still a Linksys router here somewhere. We'll take the satellite view. This is a, a very famous landmark. You will see this. Uh, this is a big cafe. And somewhere over there, there is still a Linksys router. Cool. I mean, let's see if there are any Belkins that have been detected over the last year in Blankenberg. Uh, no, let's see. Belkin, I think 45G is the standard network name. Um, nope, none of those. Uh, let's see if there are any tr still any Trecoms out there. That should be interesting because Trecom went belly up uh, quite a while ago. Uh, let's see. Mm, nope, no, no, no tree comps. Cool. Let's just create Belkin. Oh, I know what I did wrong. That would be 45G. Those are the default names of some of those uh, access points that are also sometimes open, but there are none of those in Blankenberg or around, which is uh, pretty amazing. But you know, it can happen. Um, now, what I was, uh, what you can also do is just you know, throw in a wildcard and search uh, an empty field. And that will give you all of the access points that have been detected, let's say, this year. And that will be a fairly accurate map and a fairly recent map of all of the access points that are out there. Now, there is a little bit of an error here. There hasn't been any data since 2013, so we'll just do the other one. And then you can just zoom in and look for any access point that you would like to uh, see if it's still out there or see if you can still use it. And uh, you know, it's really cool because there is a lot of uh, of them out there. If you just take a look at this, um, some of them are pretty, you know, have still have the default SSID. There are a lot of companies broadcasting their SSID. You can actually find uh, quite a few wireless access points. So next time that you are stuck here and you need the internet well all you need to do is go to wiggle.net and actually look if there's any Wi-Fi near you that you might be able to use I love wiggle even if I have to go here and if I get a choice between going here and going to jail I'm gonna see how good I look in orange an orange jumpsuit I think that looks good on me, because here, they don't have Wi-Fi. Hello Nightwise.com, my name is Thor. I'd like to show you how to use the Plumble Android app to join the Mumble server of the Nightwise.com community. Let's get right to it. This is the Plumble app. It's a Mumble client for your Android device. And I'd like to show you how to use this to connect to the Nightwise.com Mumble server so you can chat with me and the rest of the Nightwise.com community. It costs a little over a dollar, and once you've purchased it, purchase it, you can just open it up and start connecting. If you don't want to purchase it, I have pasted a uh, link to the APK file that you can download and install manually to your Android device on the Google Plus community for Nightwise.com. So, to get right to it, you open the Plumble client and it will show you where to click to add a server to your favorites. So, 
the plus button that is highlighted up in the corner. You want to click that to add a new server. So first press OK, click the plus button, and it'll ask you to add a server. Start by adding a descriptive label like nightwise.com since we're adding the nightwise.com mumble server. And in the address bar, you fill in home.nightwise.com as posted on the Google Plus community by Nightwise. The number next to the address is the port number. You can just leave that as it is. It's the default port number and it's correct. The username. You have to fill out a username. If everyone uses Plumble user as their username, it'll be a whole lot of conflicts because a person may have a username on a server at a time. Uh, you may not log in with a username that is already in use on the server. So, to choose a username you just tap the text field and choose whatever username you want. I use TCUC so I recommend not using that otherwise we'll have conflicts. Just click done and now click add and it will do a quick check and see if the server is online It'll do this every time you open the app, and unfortunately it'll sometimes show the server is offline. If you then click to connect, it'll connect anyway because the server is online. So, now you can just tap the server that you set up, and it will log you in. Uh, as you can see, you are logged in under the root. So you can talk with other people that are logged into the root. You can slide to the left to access the text talk where you can type with other people logged in but since you're a cool nightwise.com listener you're going to want to join the sliders lobby which is exclusive for nightwise.com listeners now if you click the join you will see that your permissions are denied this is because you have not set up an access token yet and I will show you how to do so momentarily now press your menu button tap the access tokens and here you will want to fill in the access token for the sliders lobby which is posted on the Google Plus community. Now just tap and you can fill in longhand. I've copied it to my clipboard for making it easy. It is hacks, tips and tweaks for cross-platform geeks all in one word. Now just click the add button and you'll see that it adds a new line. You can either add more access tokens if you have been granted access to like Skunkworks or the Green Room or if you're using another server and they have a different room with a different access token, then of course you'll add that one to that server. Now just click the cancel button for now, and you can tap the sliders lobby, and now, as you can see, you can join. So you can sit in the sliders lobby and talk with nightwise.com listeners. Well, that's all we have time for this week on the nightwise.com podcast. I hope you enjoyed our little special about Wiggle. Before I want to close off, I want to tell you uh, guys something about the sensitivity of this information. I mean, we all broadcast our SSIDs, but along with those SSIDs, you know, we broadcast our MAC addresses and we broadcast our geolocations. It might not be such a bad thing, it might, not so, it might seem trivial, but it's not. I had recorded this show when I, uh, the first uh, edit of this show, I recorded the part with the uh, smartphone here in the house, and I also did a demonstration of uh, looking up my own access point. After I would recorded the show, I found out that I had actually disclosed not only where I live, but also the geographical location of where I live and the approximation of where my SSID is. Now it's not accurate, there are, there are some margins for error, uh, but you know, if you put two and two together, these are just tiny bits of information that don't have any value in, in, or any risk on themselves, but if you put two and two together like this and the social media um, profile and stuff like that, even a house number, some pictures that you found on the internet of somebody in front of his house and stuff, 
people can actually use this information against you and I actually decided because I trust the community but these videos also go on YouTube and stuff like that to kind of anonymize that a little bit more and uh, do it a different way so just be a little warned when you're you know not only collecting this information and playing with it and using it but also think about what information you're putting out there um, I want to give you a little bit of an example <clears throat> this is an old WRT45G router that I found at the dump so I brought it home with me because I wanted to play around with it and here on the bottom is its MAC address. Now <laughs> I was playing around with Wiggle and I thought you know what I'm gonna enter this MAC address into Wiggle see what happens and I actually found the location of its previous owner where it had been for the last four years. It's been picked up for the first time four years ago and the last time it was picked up was this year so it's only been recently thrown out uh, onto the dump where I picked it up but I could trace back where it has actually been in service so you know it's not about the information per se but it's about the combinations that you make with these different kinds of informations and the results that you get but aside from that Wiggle is a very cool tool to see where you can get your free Wi-Fi or any open Wi-Fi or where are where there are any hotspots available that you can use so really cool I want to thank Patrick uh, nightwise.com fan and uh, wise guy who actually gave me the idea for this podcast he showed us a couple of weeks ago in the nightwise.com community what Wiggle was all about and you also can be a part of that community just go to nightwise.com slash Google Plus that's our Google Plus community where you will find uh, a lot of like-minded wise guys and wise girls who like to talk tech and give each other interesting ideas. Um, like this for example because we were talking about uh, the pineapple where we talked about last week and we were talking about Wi-Fi and if you just start combining all of this you know you walk around with a pineapple you collect all of these SSIDs you put all the SSIDs back into um, Wiggle so you can actually see where the SSIDs are located where they were it's it's scary stuff there's a lot of information that you can gather and put together and make conclusions and um, you know just beware what can you do against a war driving attack well you can disable your SSID so it's not transmitted and that's about all you can do uh, to keep uh, yourself off the Wiggle radar if you're worried so as I said that's all we have time for this week you know where to go when you want to join the nightwise.com community if you still want to send us feedback you can use the classic email address feedback at nightwise.com if you want to send us email and of course go over to the website www.nightwise.com that's k-n-i-g-h-t-w-i-s-e.com where you can subscribe to this podcast if you're a YouTube viewer and you just picked up this video Yes, you can subscribe to the nightwise.com podcast and get all of our episodes, the video podcasts like this one, and the audio podcasts delivered to your favorite podcatcher automatically. If you want to help us promote the show, you can also do that. A uh, friend of the show, uh, Gerard, has put together a nightwise.com promo kit. You can go to the website and uh, take a look at it. Uh, there are audio promos in there that you can play on your podcast or on a podcast that you listen to. You might want to send that out to help people find the show. And you can also uh, take one of our banners, put them on your blog, link back to us. Uh, there are plenty of uh, cool things out there, even nightwise.com wallpapers. I haven't had it on my wall, uh, on my desktop lately. I'm sorry. I should have had it here. It's way cooler than this, this clown. So <laughs> it's all out there. That's it for this week. Stay safe. Make sure that uh, your SSIDs are protected. Take a good look at what data are you putting out there and what can people do to put two and two together So uh, with tools like this and uh, like Wiggle. I'll see you guys on the flip side next week on an audio episode coming up. And uh, you might want to check this out because it's uh, pretty interesting as well. I'm going to tell you guys in the uh, nightwise.com community on Google Plus what it's about. So you'll just have to go there and join. 
and we'll see you on the flip side. Until then, let technology work for you instead of the other way around, and uh, tune tech in that into your way of life. See you guys. Bye.